Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary and in today's video we will be sharing some high-end look bathroom decor DIYs my daughter Nikki and I recently made for my bathroom makeover. My intention was to add some upscale flair using some downscale fare like items purchased at Ikea, Dollar Tree and thrift stores along with some recycled items as well. I wanted to start with some of these gorgeous bottles and canisters I'm seeing around. I love the clean lines of the clear glass topped with a chunky wood or cork lid. I particularly like those sleek looking ball top canisters. Plus I think they'll make a much more attractive presentation than my current setup. To make my look for less versions, I'll be using a mix of Dollar Tree jars, vases and other materials and also some thrifted and recycled slash repurposed items. If you like candles like I do, then you probably have had a few come in jars with cork or wood lids. Don't throw those away. You can definitely repurpose the original jar and lid set for dozens of uses, or you can separate and use for different DIYs. You'll be amazed at how these lids will fit on other jars and vases and give a whole new look and purpose to those items. For example, this wood lid fits perfectly on this Dollar Tree jar and will make the perfect container for my bath soak. This Dollar Tree cylinder vase pairs perfectly with a wood lid from another candle and has a large capacity to hold my Epsom salts. This mid-sized glass container once held a candle itself, but it did not have a lid. However, the cork topper from another candle fits it perfectly and now will be repurposed to hold and display my bath fizzes. And this hourglass vase from a one-time flower arrangement pairs perfectly with this cork lid, again from a previous jar candle. Now, if you're saying, well, that's great, but I don't have any leftover cork or wood lids. No worries, we got you covered. We'll just DIY some. To do so, I'll be using these Dollar Tree jars, but you can use any jar with a chunky lid. First, I'll make the cork lid using this adhesive cork sheet from Dollar Tree. I measured and cut the strips to go around the sides of the lid, and then I traced the lid on top of the sheet to measure and cut the top. First, I applied the sides and then the top, and it's just a simple peel and stick, but you do want to kind of press those seams together as you're applying the top. For the other jar, I will be using a faux wood finish, and to do so, I took Waverly chalk paint in the colors Cashew and Hazelnut and mixed the two together to get a warm, natural wood color. Then I painted two coats of this mixed color on the jar lid. Once that was dry, I took more of the hazelnut color paint and diluted that with water. Then I took a chip brush, and I get these at Dollar Tree in the hardware section, and I dabbed the brush in the diluted paint, removed some, and then gently brushed the lid to create a wood grain look. And then there you go, examples of both a wood and cork topped jar to hold bathroom essentials. But like I mentioned, the one I'm really loving are the jars with the cork ball topper. And to make a DIY version, I took one of these Dollar Tree baseballs and I picked these up in the summer toy section and I poked a skewer through the hole in the bottom. Then I took some Dollar Tree caulk and I get this in the hardware section and I squeeze out a whole bunch since I want to cover the entire ball. Next, I dip my fingers in water to spread the caulk around. And as long as you keep your fingers wet, you should be able to spread it around with minimal stickiness. Then once I have a nice even coating of caulk all around the ball, I'm going to sit it aside and let it rest for about 40 minutes to an hour. Then once the caulk is a little dry, I'm going to take a pencil, dip that in water, then pounce it around on the surface of the ball, making little pock marks. But since I'm trying to replicate the flat, uneven particle in the cork, I don't want little circles. So I'll flatten out the marks kind of erratically all over the ball again using my fingers. In this step, I'm just trying to get the uneven surface and I'll use paint to get the color variations in the next steps. Once I got the surface to my liking, I set it aside to dry completely overnight. And then this is what it looks like when it's completely dry. And I kind of like it as is. What's neat is that it pairs perfectly with this Dollar Tree vase. And because it has some pliability, it actually forms a pretty good seal. But I promised a cork-like topper. So to paint, I'll again be using the Waverly chalk paint in cashew and hazelnut, and I will again mix just a portion this time together. For the first coat, I'll paint the entire surface in just the hazelnut color. Next, I took the mixed color and loaded it just the top of my paintbrush and dabbed that erratically on the surface. I did the same with the cashew only color, but to a lesser degree. Next, I added specks of a darker brown color, then blended it with a wipe. Finally, I added splotches of caramel brown and then again blended it with a wipe. Well, not exactly like the real thing, but 
pretty close. While I was working on the new jars and canisters, Nikki was busy making some shelves. She found these wood boxes at Dollar Tree in the plus section for just $5 each and thought if we could hang them on the wall, they would make great storage and display for the new jars. She removed the rope handles and plugged the holes with putty. Since there's a little gap on the bottom of the box, it won't sit flush on the wall. So she needed to add some water bottle tops to the corners to fill the gap and kind of act as washers. Although these would be really nice stained, all of the wood in my bathroom is painted white. So we decided to go ahead and paint with some satin white spray paint. However, even after several coats, it was just kind of beachy white at best. So I decided to paint with the latex paint used on the other woodwork in my bathroom. And then that gave a much better finish. From here, I drilled some holes to hang and I will attach to the wall using screws and anchors. And then once they were hung, I went back with some white paint and then just touched up on the surface of the screws. And then, oh, so pretty, a wonderful place to both store and display our beautiful new canisters. And then the Epsom salt and seaweed soak found a home on a shelf near the bath. After completing the shelves, that little woodworker Nikki got to work on some wooden towel holders using Dollar Tree canvases, popsicle sticks, and these little wooden boxes also from Dollar Tree. To start, she removed the canvas from the frame, which came off easy enough. Not so much for the staples. You really have to dig in and pry up with a screwdriver and also use pliers, but they will come up. Next, she took the popsicle sticks and cut four pieces about two inches long each and glued two to each side of the bottom end of the box using tight bond glue. Next, she took the box lid and the frame and measured to find the center of both. Then she centered the frame on the lid and glued with some tight bond glue. To further secure the two pieces together, she first drilled and then used two small screws to attach. From here, I sanded it and then painted this piece as well as the box with the popsicles attached with the latex white trim paint. And then here's what it looks like after several coats of paint with a few sandings in between. Now the idea here is to attach the bottom of the box to the wall with anchors and screws and then slide the top of the box along with the frame attached onto the front. First, I'll drill a couple of holes into the bottom of the box and then I'll use anchors and screws to attach it to the wall. I will screw in one screw, then make certain that the box is level and then go ahead and do the second screw. And then I'll show you this part again since I didn't have footage of me putting it on the wall. I slid the lid of the box with the frame attached onto the front. And I also attached a little tight bond glue to the underside of those top popsicle sticks as well. And then we liked them so much, we decided to make two. And then as if all the woodworking wasn't enough, Nikki also made a couple cute little candle holders using our new favorite combo, recyclables and thrift store jewelry. And there's also a little Dollar Tree votive thrown in there for good measure. And then these bangle bracelets that we picked up for just a dollar or two each at our local thrift store. And all she did was take the two pieces and using some E6000 glue, she attached the two together. Another quick and easy Dollar Tree and thrift store combo is this Dollar Tree candlestick paired with a glass light cover from the thrift store. A wood round covers the hole and then all three get glued together with some E6000 glue. It can be used to hold sponges and loofahs or as a container for hand towels and pairs well with the other thrift store Dollar Tree combos. And for the next DIY, I bought some prints at Ikea and I hung them on the wall. Ta-da! Nah, you know I wouldn't do you like that. Here's my son Mark to demonstrate the real ta-da. I decoupaged the Ikea prints to the front of three medicine cabinets that I bought at Lowe's for just $19.99. Now, in addition to having beautiful artwork, we also have out of the way and even hidden storage. It started with identifying an area between two studs that didn't have any electric or plumbing. Next, I purchased the cabinets and the prints and the Ikea 16 by 20 prints pair perfectly with the Lowe's cabinet. To decoupage, I first cleaned the mirror with vinegar and a microfiber cloth to make sure it was clean and lint-free. Next, I applied some Mod Podge in a thin, even layer. Since I'm working with such a big piece of paper, I wanna make sure that the Mod Podge is applied in a very thin, even, 
slightly dry layer and I keep painting the surface, ensuring full coverage. And once all the areas, especially the edges, are covered, I begin removing the excess Mod Podge. I cannot stress enough that this has to be a very thin layer of Mod Podge. And once all of the excess has been removed, I actually let this dry for about five minutes before applying the print. And then once it has dried to the point of having the same tackiness of say, like a glue stick, so it's kind of dry, but still a little uh, sticky, still of course needs to be sticky. And then um, I lay the print on top and then just smooth it out. And you will see how it doesn't have any lines, welts, bubbles, anything. Now, since this is such a large piece of paper, I want to make extra certain that there are no issues with wrinkling or bubbling or any of those decoupage nightmares. So I'm going to also do the credit card method where I just take a card, actually this is a, a gift card or something, but uh, so a little, it's not as rigid as a credit card would be. So I should have had a credit card. But anyway, I'm just kind of making sure that it is nice and smooth and I'll just keep going over it and kind of just pushing it out. Uh, even with my hands, I'll, I'll continue to, to flatten it and make sure it is nice and adhered to. Uh, the two pieces are adhering together because even uh, with the dry, dry Mod Podge, you still could have problems because of the size of the paper with uh, you know having some decoupage issues. So again, just probably for the like five minutes after I put the piece of paper on, I just kept going over it and over it, making sure that I didn't have any um, wrinkling or anything like that. And as you can see from the film that it was just working beautifully, no issues, and it dried perfectly. Now again, because it is so large, I am going to let this cure overnight so that uh, when I put the top coats on, there won't be any top coat issues. And then here we are the next day and I will go ahead and add two layers of Mod Podge. I may go ahead and do a three layer because of it being in a bath area, but as you can see, we are good to go. And then here they are again after the three coats of Mod Podge have been applied to the top layer and um, have of course been installed back into the wall. And I am so glad that this is finally done. It has been in the works for about six months. So I'm so glad I finally got this project completed. And if you'd like to see some neat hacks for organizing medicine cabinets, definitely check out this video here. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.